Hamilton, as I told you yesterday, and I think you, I hope you, you got it, comes from Joyce and, and Duchamp, clear. But he looked at a lot at Maxence also, and he did a show of Maxence. It's why we could go from Maxence to Hamilton very easily. What he, in, he, he makes, Hamilton, is tableau collage. That's really what his work is about. I mean, the best of his work is about that, about this idea of tableau collage, which comes from many different uh, horizons. But about these horizons, there is the abstraction. And if you look at his tableau collage, they are full of, of, abstract, of abstraction. They are not just dealing with the heritage of, of Maxence. So look at, so this I showed you yesterday already, so we go fast, but look at this. It's quite clear, no? Huh? And this floating, the, this, this idea of things floating, you, you get there, totally. It's what it is about. And it's even more impressive when you know the, the, the photograph he used, because in the photograph he used, it's not floating. Because of, uh, excuse me, because of the density of, of the black and white, this idea of things floating are... So it's so, I mean, it is there, of course, you can see it, but you have to see it inside the, the, the and to develop it. And it developed it, how did it develop it? It developed it, you see, it's very clear, by adding color and by transforming the, this this um, uh, 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 distorted perspective, because the pers perspective of the of the photograph is already very distorted, huh? <laughs> by transforming this distortion of perspective uh, with the plan plans of color by a combination of plans of color, and this idea of a combination of plans of color, where is it where is it coming from? <laughs> okay. Uh, what I would like now to uh, uh, show you is, uh, and giving you just one uh, example, it's the way this tableau d'intérieur, uh, uh, I don't know why it's difficult for me to translate this tableau d'intérieur, tableau, tableau of interiors, there is something which doesn't sound well. Huh? Yes, I think tableau d'intérieur sounds sounds good in French. Huh? It sounds good in a <laughs> no, no, because I I I I knew Hamilton quite well, and he didn't speak French at all. Huh? It's very it's very amazing because he 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 worked a lot on Duchamp, and he could read a little bit, but he could not talk. I know, but he didn't speak. I did. He didn't speak French. I tell you. We never, never had an, uh, an exchange of, in French of uh, more than one sentence. <laughs> he didn't speak French at all. I mean, he, he was unable to speak French. He could a little bit read it, but so he did all this work on Duchamp without knowing French, which is amazing, which is very interesting because, yeah. I mean, I would not develop it, but you know what he did. Eh? He did a typographical transposition of the of all the notes from the, the green box. And it's beautiful, and it's so intelligent. And, and Duchamp was, was very glad. He did it without really reading. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was no, yes, yes, no, it was, yes, no, it was translated, of course. No, no, it was translated, so he, re he read it in the... Yes, a friend of him tra translated it, so he, he read him in, in translation. But I mean, it's, he read it in translation. It's amazing. Anyway, so <coughs> uh, the point is uh, that when he makes this tableau d'intérieur, uh, uh, so you remember his beautiful uh, remarks. Uh, about what is an interior, uh, full of anachronism. This anachronism, so anachronism, it's about time, okay. Uh, these anachronisms are also in the, the, the way a painting 
tableau, excuse me, is including other tableau as images. Well, that's the point. In a tableau like this one, you have many other tableaux. <laughs> and some of them are images of tableau. Or images of pictures. So you have everything. You have tableau, image, picture. You have everything. <laughs> huh? And the tableau d'intérieur is also this kind of work inside the history, the pictorial history. Huh? So, it's in, in, so this intérieur is also l'intérieur de la peinture. Huh? You are inside the pictorial. The pictorial. Huh? There we are back to English because this, you don't have it in French. The pictorial. This idea that there is a dimension of picture which is including everything. Even, I mean, from painting to, to I don't know, uh, uh, illustration, I mean the lowest level of illustration. <laughs> From the highest level of painting to the lowest level of illustration, in British language it's the pictorial. And that's what he's dealing with. And it's so beautiful. I know very few artists able to do that. I know Hamilton, I know Polka, I know very few. And the ones who are able to do that are really great. Because they do something very good for, for us for everybody, they make us able to move mentally in the, field of, in the field of culture without discrimination, without the, this kind of discriminations we have to do well, in another, on another side. When I tell you you have to go to the best things and, and see the differences, so I'm very, you know, I'm very clear about that. I don't say that there is no uh, uh, hierarchy of, of values. I mean, I think there is, there is a hierarchy. I'm not a, 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 among these historians who say everything is equal and so on and so on. Not one second. But I, I, I say also that we need to be able to move inside the field of images and not to be trapped in uh, uh, only in a, 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 in a vision of a high art as opposed to low art. You know, these very dogmatic ideas, you know. We have to be we, we need a, a, a mental mobility. <laughs> and that's what these kind of artists have. Hamilton, Polka. I give you these two examples because there are some other, but, but in terms of painting and in terms of what is a tableau, I think they are probably the best. <laughs> and if you are a painter, I mean, you, you, and you're a serious painter, you deal with a tableau. But, but it's not a reason to forget the images. <laughs> it's not a reason to, to, to exclude this experience, this very confusing even experience of images, because it's confusing. So you have to deal with it. And in a way, there is, I would use a great word, but, but you know, it's Gombrich, so I can do it. <laughs> the e ecology of the mind. There is something about the ecology of the mind to deal with all these images as a painter. A painter is an ecologist of the mind uh, in, the, in the relationship with images. Hello. So, there are all these images inside the tableau. Okay. And some of these images are reproductions of paintings. Reproductions of tableau. There we have this key problem of the reproduction. And it's why also the connection with Polka is clear. Because Polka is a lot about reproduction. A lot. Uh, uh, on this point, I, I refer you to my text on Polka, where I develop it lengthily, this idea of, of reproduction in, in, in Polka's work. Uh, so, let's now see a little bit concretely how it works. Uh, concretely inside the, the composition, the collage composition, eh? composition collage. Okay. So you you see here uh, interior, interior one. Alors, in, in interior two you have the uh, the chair, the armchair, eh? uh, and you see 
uh, in the background uh, several uh, images on the wall. Huh? You, s you see them? Okay. They are there. Um, um, I have to mention here an idea which is very nice, uh, which is the idea of mise en abîme. Did you, do you know about it? Uh, the idea of mise en abîme? This is that, the mise en abîme. It's an idea uh, which was, um, uh, uh, which came from uh, André Gide. It didn't exist before. He invented the, the, the idea, even the, the, the term abîme. It, it didn't exist huh? in French language before. <laughs> it's an invention. Uh, and this is a text. Maybe you can go and look at it by yourself. Huh? It's translated. I mean, uh, it's very famous. Okay. So we have an example in uh, Milton of this, of the mise en abîme. Okay. Uh, the first example uh, uh, um, uh, Gide uh, uh, gives of it, as you see, is the painting by Velázquez, Las Meninas. It's uh, very significant, but we shall not. Develop it. I just indicate to, to you this point, and so go and see, go and see this text. It's uh, it's very good. Uh, I don't have the English translation here. Okay. Uh, now, uh, in the uh, uh, tableau, uh, you have because it's a collage, you have a mirror, a real piece of mirror. And you see two, uh, 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 two different reflections inside the mirror. Huh? It, it's the same tableau, but of course it changes all the time because there is a mirror. Huh? The mirror is what makes, what gives the, the tableau, what, what inscribes the tableau in time, of course, because it's, it's, it changes all the time. It, there will be never the same reflection in the mirror. <laughs> um, And there is an, so there is a mirror, and there is also this, <laughs> the pencil. And with a very strong effect of trompe l'oeil uh, on, uh, on the foreground. Okay? And then you have, you have the silhouette of the woman. He did, he made the second interior from the silhouette. Uh, he, he had the silhouette and then he said, oh, now I have to reconstruct the composition around the silhouette. <laughs> so, you have the silhouette, you are here in the first uh, uh, interior. You have, what you have at the tate is the second interior, uh, the one, uh, this one. This is the one you can see uh, uh, in the, at the tate. The other one is in Zurich, as I showed you. Alors, but in the first one, you have all these uh, images. And one of these, um, so this is the second one, this is a, a small uh, kind of, uh, it's a small tableau uh, related to the interiors, but autonomous, which is just about uh, the, the, the desk, so it's uh, typically a study, huh? a study as a tableau. Huh? I mean, where now you, you know this, huh? The, this play with tableau and study. Okay. So once more, you see that it works for artists, for serious artists, artists who didn't forget the history of art. <laughs> uh, we don't don't consider that they reinvented everything. These are most of the time the stupid artists who think so. So and uh, and then. And then uh, I show you this about floating. This space, this floating space, is also the space of exhibition. And uh, Hamilton has this <coughs> had this peculiarity that he was interested in uh, uh, making exhibitions. And for him, making exhibitions was not different from make. I mean, yet it was different, but it was part of his activity as an artist. It was not just, you know. He was not schizophrenic, huh? <laughs> so, and and you see that you see it quite clearly there, when you see the the connection between 
uh, 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 work of him and uh, an installation he did. So, then we are back to, uh, back to um, uh, reproduction, uh, 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 interior one. And uh, voilà. That's what he said. It's a very interesting text huh? in relation with what I, uh, I said before. You have quite everything. Huh? I don't think it needs any comment. It's quite obvious. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, but let's now see a little bit more um, uh, uh, what happened. Because he made a confusion. He made a confusion because, you see, this is another word. Uh, it's a uh, it's a interior study interior study A as as you remember you have two tableaux but three studies which are uh, numbered A B C eh? and this is the study A and in the study A you have a photograph of the salon of Madame Rouard. Madame Rouard was Julie Manet. And Julie Manet is the niece of the painter. Edouard Manet, yes. I mean, <laughs> the famous painter. <laughs> And she is the daughter of Bert Morisot. So it's a very complex family uh, structure. Huh? You can get lost very easily. <laughs> And it's what happened to Hamilton. He got lost <laughs> in this family story, which is very interesting. Because in a way, every interior is, I mean, domestic interior, is full of histories of stories of family. Full of, of course. I mean, And if you get lost, in the decor, it's because also in a way you get lost in the uh, family stories. So, you see, there is behind all this a, a, a very serious idea of, of, the bourgeois, of the bourgeois culture with this kind of accumulation, because you have this more in the bourgeois culture than in the popular culture, for sure, because the salon the interior in bourgeois culture is made of layers with many, many, many things, more than in... Uh, I mean, it's debatable, because sometimes you have also a lot of layers in popular culture. Eh? It's very debatable. But let's consider that a salon is, you know, I mean, especially at the, at the late, 18th, late 19th century, it was really full. Eh? <laughs> it was not uh, empty, eh? as it is uh, sometimes now. So he's dealing with this. Uh, I didn't find uh, where Hamilton found this image of the salon de Madame Rouard. If you can find it for me, I would be very uh, 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 grateful. <laughs> uh, where, where he found where he found this uh, uh, reproduction? Uh, in a, probably in a magazine. I don't know. Uh, and it, it takes only a part of it, so it would be very interesting to have the full document also to see uh, the way he, 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 he transformed it. Uh, anyway, when you look at this uh, study, then you see exactly where is the uh, painting. And you see that No, it's not obvious, no. But uh, then you understand that in... Voilà. Yes. Voilà. You see. No, it's... Uh, 
it, it's true that sometimes art history becomes a, a kind of detective novel, huh? and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of the pleasure. Uh, there is this pleasure in art history to to uh, to, to follow, this, to investigate. You know, in a way, uh, um, you do it in a detective novel. Okay, so. <coughs> Uh, so, you see the painting in the photograph of the salon. And you know what he did? It is really crazy. He isolated the reproduction, the, I mean, he isolated the, the image of the painting in the salon, in his uh, tableau. Not in the study, but in the tableau. You imagine it's... it's a, it's a very, very uh, uh, funny attitude. You take a, an, an image of a salon. In this uh, image, there you, you see a, a painting, and you isolate the painting. And you integrate, not in the tableau at the end, not the view of the salon, but this element of the view. And you paint it, and you paint it. Paint it. So, you are really working inside the view. Alors, that was normally one of my points, inside the view. But I will not have time, and I will, but I will talk about it in next week in uh, the Tate, of this idea of inside the view. Um, so, here you have a good example of the way a, a painter can work inside the view. And the view which is... Uh, which is comprising a reproduction of painting <laughs> huh? in this kind of mise en abyme structure. Okay? And so uh, Elia, because I didn't, but Elia found the picture. I don't know if it was uh, found already uh, by an art historian here. Probably we can, but, but we didn't find, we didn't find any. <coughs> Any text, maybe it exists about it. So we have we had to find by ourselves, and Elia found the painting, and this is the painting, and it's very very interesting to, that it is this painting because well, so he made a mistake. He projected in the painting the content of the of the photograph in his memory. It's very interesting. Because the painting is not showing an interior at all. The painting is showing these two women in a garden. Uh, and this painting is by Bert Morisot, and it's called Le Cerisier. Uh, it's 1891. The cherry tree. Huh? Cherry tree. Okay. Uh, alors, now, it's, it's nice because the way this painting is reproduced in black and white, transforms it totally. And most people who see the painting in the, uh, uh, I mean, the reproduction of the painting in the tableau by Milton, think that it's Cubist or, or that it's uh, Duchamp. <laughs> it's not. It is that. It is a view, it's not an interior. It's an exterior. <laughs> huh? And it's um, a very idyllic image huh? of an exterior, something which has nothing to do with the drama inside the, with the melodrama uh, of, of the photograph of he, uh, he used. Okay, so. I suppose that you understand now why I said that Richard Hamilton is not a pop artist. I think it becomes clear. He, he is really not a pop artist. I mean, he was part at a certain moment of a movement which was called pop art by a critic called Lawrence Holloway. Okay, good. Who was not stupid, Lawrence Holloway? Uh, at all. Um, so it's okay, all this um, makes sense, I mean, there is a moment in history and so on and so on. But if you look at the, the work of Hamilton and what is uh, his work for itself, huh, his work 
the, the logic, the internal logic of the work. I mean, what makes this work interesting? It is not pop. It's totally different. It, it comes from other uh, 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 sources and other attitudes and so on. So you, you see better now why Duchamp enjoys. Because this complexity we were talking about, when Hamilton says that in Joyce, he found the pos in uh, Ulysses, he found this possibility of changing all, all the, the, the style uh, all the time. You see, it's exactly what he does in his in the interior, mixing all these styles. And you see here, using this painting, <laughs> So this diversity, internal diversity or complexity uh, or intrication, huh? it could be interesting maybe to, to think about this idea of intrication, intricacy, or uh, iconographical intricacy. Mm -hmm. huh? Could be interesting maybe. I just uh, think of it. Uh, and now you will have the evidence. The evidence by Hamilton himself. Uh, alors, that's a very funny thing. Hamilton gave uh, uh, an interview uh, I should have it here, yes. He gave an, an interview, you see, uh, uh, to uh, 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 an art critic who had curated this show in the Royal Academy. This critic, I don't know him, is Marco Livingston. And I saw this show. And it was very important for me, this show. Sometimes bad things are very important because you, you understand really uh, where you are, what you want, and so on. So I was very happy with this show. I bought the, the catalog, I read everything. I mean, because it was exactly what I didn't want to do. And, uh, um, uh, and I understood really why I was deeply uninterested in the idea of pop art. Uh, it was clear for me already before, but after this show it became obvious. And, and, um, and especially because the show was made with uh, national uh, sections, which is so stupid. And, and there was one artist, important in the show, of course, Richard Hamilton, who said during this discussion with Marco Livingston, that it was really stupid <laughs> to present pop art like this in national sections. He says it like that, very tough, because Hamilton could be very tough. 